What is RAG? RAG is Retrieval Augmented Generation, and it's a technique to make your AI give better answers. Imagine a regular large language model like ChatGPT. It's been trained on a huge body of data. So you ask it a question, and it's been trained to know that, so it goes, sure, here's the answer, I already know that. But let's say you ask something outside of its knowledge, maybe a recent development that happened after it was trained, or some niche or very specific topic. And it goes, I'm sorry, Adam, I don't know the answer. Or worse, because it's eager to please me, it just makes something up. And that is not ideal, especially not if you're using AI in a business context. RAG fixes this by giving an AI the ability to do two things. The first is retrieval, which is the ability to go search for the relevant information it needs from external sources instead of from the data that it's been trained on. And the second is generation, which is the ability to take that information it's found and give it in a detailed, coherent response. Think of it as turning your AI into a brilliant librarian who knows where to go looking for answers and then can also come back and summarize what they've found for you. For organizations looking to make an AI that can provide current relevant data in real time, human digestible format, RAG is the technique for you. Right now, RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, is being talked about a lot. And some people might think, is this is a buzzword. Is this just some concept? But it's actually a way of solving real world challenges in AI. And it, it does solve problems. And two of these problems is uh, making sure that an AI can give up-to-date answers. Unlike static LLMs, RAG dynamically integrates new knowledge, ensuring any answers that it gives are accurate and timely. It also helps reduce model size. So instead of training massive model on all possible knowledge, RAG offloads a lot of that data into external storage, and that reduces the computational requirements. And those two features are particularly important in certain areas. One is customer support. So on customer support, you can create an LLM that can give precise informed responses based on up-to-date internal information. Because the last thing you want to be doing is giving your customers bad, untimely advice. And say in healthcare, you can use it to create a healthcare application that can assist doctors with the latest research and treatment guidelines by actually checking the facts. In personalized learning, you could use it to create AI tutors that adapt to a student's knowledge gaps using external resources. And those are just a few of the useful applications of RAG, and it allows to bridge that gap between static training and real-time knowledge, and makes more smarter, more useful AI systems. Implementing retrieval augmented generation isn't a future thing. It's something you can do with your AI skills today. First, identify a use case. One of the biggest problems that organizations make when it comes to AI, and I hear this again and again, is to think of the technology first and not think of the actual business problem that you're trying to solve. So some common business problems that you might use RAG to solve might include knowledge retrieval for customer support teams, internal knowledge management for employees, or personalized user experiences in domains such as healthcare, retail, or education. Second, prepare your knowledge base. For RAG to retrieve data, it needs that data and it needs it in the right format. So data preparation is crucial. Gather domain-specific documents, FAQs, or data logs, and then use a tool like Hugging Paces Sentence Transformers or OpenAI's Embeddings API to convert those into vector embeddings. Now, if you don't know what embeddings are, they're numerical representations of text that capture semantic meaning. I know that is a bit of a mouthful, but just think about it as a unique fingerprint for each piece of information, which allows the retriever to figure out how closely it matches the user query. Third, you need to choose a retriever and a generator. Remember those embeddings that we mentioned earlier? The retriever searches our knowledge base for information using a vector similarity search to compare a query's embeddings with those of the documents. Now for a retriever, use FICE for fast similarity searches or Elasticsearch for larger data sets. Then the generator, which allows you to take those retrieved documents and integrate them into a response. And it takes all that data and it turns it into an answer that's natural and coherent. For a generator, you can use pre-trained models from Hugging Face. Fourth, deploy RAG as a microservice. You can use Flask to create an API that combines retrieval and augmentation. Then you can integrate this microservice into existing workflows and applications. Well, when you're implementing retrieval augmented generation, there are some challenges and best practices you should be aware of. The first thing you should be mindful of is data quality. With AI, you're bound to hear the term eventually, garbage in, garbage out. And this is true with RAG as well. So make sure that you ensure the quality of your knowledge base. If you don't, and you've got poorly curated or outdated data, your AI is likely to give incorrect answers. And that is the opposite of what you're trying to achieve when you're implementing RAG. The second thing you should be mindful of is latency. Combining retrieval and generation, the two core components of RAG, that takes time. 
And this is especially true with large data sets or complex queries. So ask yourself, what are my latency requirements? You should also consider the embedding accuracy. Using high quality embedding models like OpenAI or Sentence Transformers is critical for effective retrieval. Think about the scaling. As your knowledge base grows, efficient indexing tools like FICE or Elasticsearch are going to become essential. Lastly, you're gonna to have to think about the need for fine tuning. While RAG reduces the need for frequent retraining, fine tuning the generator on your domain can significantly improve performance. Wanna know more about RAG? Set yourself a pet project, especially if you're a developer. Think about how RAG could improve your interactions with AI to solve problems in your organization or even your personal life. And as a developer, I encourage you to challenge yourself to build your own RAG system and then customize it to your use case. To learn more about how you can actually technically do that, Pluralsight has a number of expert-led courses you can check out. I'd highly recommend Axel Sirota's course on vector space model and embeddings and RAGs, which can actually show you how to implement a RAG-based chatbot using Python and TensorFlow, focusing on text embedding and retrieval techniques. You can also check out the wider retrieval augmented generation for developers path of Pluralsight. In it, you'll learn everything you need to know from RAG deployment, maintenance, fine tuning, scaling, and more. Have fun, and I look forward to seeing what you build.